So this fish is a megram. It's a really sustainable fish, uh, really underutilized. The Cornish have rebranded the Cornish sole. We're going to fillet it. You can do this in a number of ways. You can take the whole fillet off both sides or you can quarter fillet it. I'm going to quarter fillet today um, as that's a good way to use it within a school. Um, then you've got four fillets, one, two, three, four, and you can use one fish between two people. One person do one side, then the other person do the other side, and you can run down your costs even, even lower. Okay, so to start this, what we're going to do is just run our knife around the edge there. Okay, so the edge of the head, just to loosen that up, and the same there. You can, you can take the head off if you want. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to run my knife down the lateral line. So you've got a line there. That's a natural line that you're going to use as a guide to find the backbone. Okay, the backbone is there. And you can see I've opened up the flesh. And then starting at the top, I'm just going to run my knife underneath the fillet like so keeping it flat against the rib cage so taking one side you can see we've hardly got any flesh left on the rib bones then we're just going to go in at the other side Just using the tip of your knife to ease the flesh from the bone. Turn it over and again, run our knife down the middle. So So the ideal situation is you're left with no flesh on the bones, yeah, as much flesh on the fillets as you can get. Just going to tidy that up by taking the row off. That's the fish eggs. We can't eat that. Oh, you could do, but it's not very nice tasting. And just tidying that up. Okay, so we have our four fillets. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to skin them. Okay, so just put those out of the way for a second. Now skin them, start, hold your knife at 45 degree angle, and then just wiggle the skin and move the knife forward. Okay, so you take off the skin like so, and there you've got your skinless fillets. Okay, I would always skin the meg rum um, because you want to poach it or you want to shallow fry it. Uh, the skin's not that tasty, to be quite honest. So I'd use these two for a poached dish by just folding the tail end into the fish and poaching like so. I'll just fold it over like that. I like to roll it up a little bit better, like so. It's called a pulpiette. And just poach those, like so. These ones here, I would cut those into goujons, like so. So this is hake, it's a round whitefish, and we're going to fillet it up today. I'm going to show you um, not normally something you would get to fillet on a regular basis because you buy it either filleted or staked from your fishmonger. Um, the difference with this white round fish is it has a big backbone going 
probably to around about there. So it has a big rib cage. So the same process as any other filleting for a round fish, but you're taking it off the bigger rib cage. Okay, so we're just going to take our knife, nice sharp filleting knife, and we're going to go in just behind that gill there till we get to the backbone. So you can see the backbone here, go around onto onto the fillet there. So just run our knife, nice sweeping, and as you can see there, yeah, there's the backbone. And it's, it's a lot bigger than you would normally get in a lot of round fish, okay? So just using our knife, just go all the way down. And doing this nice and slowly, just to so you can see how I'm taking it off there. So you see it's taking off that rib bone, like so. A master fisherman would do this in seconds, okay? Just taking it off there, and you can see I'm taking it away from the bone. Now this is where I'm going to put my knife straight through, because there's no more there, and just take it off. There we are. So that's one fillet. We're going to tidy that up in a little minute. And we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So that's the two fillets off the hake, as you can see. It's not an easy fish to fill it, and you probably wouldn't do that in the classroom as much. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just clean this up. We're going to take the belly fat out, just leave underneath there. Okay, so that's wastage. And just clean it up. Okay, so that's one side. So here we have the hake fillets off the bone, and what I'm going to do is portion them up now. With hake, um, it's best to leave it with the skin on and cook it with the skin on, because if you skin it, it tends to fall a bit. After a while, the actual flesh will get a little bit softer. Okay, you can put a little bit of salt on there before you cook it to tighten the proteins up, but um, I tend to either bake this or pan fry it really, really hot to tighten that protein up, okay? But you don't wanna really skin this straight away because as you can see, the flesh will, will fall to bits. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some portions, okay? And that's one, nice little middle line there. And then I've got a tail piece there. Or you can <coughs> skin it and cut it into goujons, but I wouldn't cut, take the skin off or something like that. And also it's part of the presentation when you're cooking this type of fish, okay? We're gonna score that up, um, make sure it's really dry, and then you just put it into a hot pan to crisp the skin up. Or you put some olive, make sure it's really dry, put some olive oil on it, and put it into an oven at a high heat. So that's one portion, two, got a nice little tail portion there. And again, the same. I'll just tidy that bit up there, take the end off. Hake's really nice uh, as fish and chips as well. Or you could uh, bread crumb it, even do a tempura batter. So we've portioned up uh, the hake here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six portions. So we took the fillets off the side, portioned them up, and we've got 140 gram portions. You should be eating two portions of fish a week 
A portion is 140 grams. One of those portions should be oily fish. And so the hake there would be a really good second portion along with some uh, mackerel, some sardines, some tuna. This is a lovely place we're gonna fill it. So we're just gonna take the head off. We're gonna go around this gill here, making sure that we don't lose too much meat in the shoulder there of the place. Yeah, just gonna take that off and we'll put that to one side. Now, we're going to use the lateral line there as a guide. And we're gonna follow that with our knife all the way down, like so keeping our fingers out of the way. And then you can feel the backbone underneath there. So there's a bone, a ridge that you can feel there. You're gonna go either side of that ridge. So you're just gonna loosen the flesh from the rib cage. Yeah. And just follow that rib cage. So you can see here uh, how I'm just <coughs> following that rib cage around all the way down. So you see there, and underneath, just following it, so your knife is flat against that rib cage, and you'll take all the flesh off. You won't waste any of that lovely fish. Okay, so that's one fillet off. Gonna go on the other side. Again, keeping my knife nice and flat against that rib cage. And you can see we left no meat on the bone there. Do the same on the other side. Knife down. Yeah. And then just run your knife against the rib cage. Loosen the fillet so you can get your whole knife and running it down. You see how I'm moving the fish around? Okay, so that's your third fillet off. So I've left very little flesh on the bone. There's a head and the carapace. We're gonna throw away that carcass. So now we're going to uh, skin the fillet. Just put our knife in there, 45 degree angle, and then just wiggle the fish skin all the way down. That way. And then we're going to take little bits off the edge there. So here we have our four fillets from the place. You can see it's quite a small place and as a quarter fillet. Or you could use these is for a pulpier, just roll them up like so. And poach those. These I'd probably use as goujons, just cut them a little bit more, or you can use it like that. So Using a small place in the classroom is ideal because you're getting small portions. You're not, you're not getting lots and lots out of there, but that's enough to cook uh, one portion of, of fish. So this is mackerel, a uh, nice oily fish, round oily fish, and we're going to fill it this. Before we can fill it, we can gut it. So what we do is we find the vent, the hole there. We run our knife all the way up to the head. And then, and then we're gonna take out all the guts and the insides, okay? I normally do this into a container. So just get your hands in there, because it's not pleasant. So I normally do this with a container because it's a little bit messy. And then we just run our finger on the bloodline, 
pulling all the bits out into some cold water. Don't use hot water, she'll cook the fish, it's that tender. Okay, so you're running all the insides out there. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, so we've got to do it. We've run uh, the fish under cold water to rinse out any of the remaining guts and blood. And now we're ready to fillet the mackerel. Okay, so I'm now going to fillet the mackerel. Really easy to do. We're just going to cut one side there, the other side behind the gill. Take the head off. So, taking the head off, we've gutted it. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to run our knife. That's the backbone there. We're going to run our knife down one side. Like so. And that takes off the fillet. Just tidy that up. Take out the belly fat. And then he burns there. We're going to pop that onto the plate. And the second side of the fillet, we're just going to run our knife, yeah, you know, following the backbone. Keep our hand nice and flat all the way to the top of the fish. And that's the second fillet off the bone. Just put that out of the way. Trim this one up, the belly fat, just take that out of the way. So there we are, we have our two mackerel fillets already start cooking up. You can pin bone them by pulling those out or we can V cut them. V cutting means we make a V both sides of the bones, and then just pull those out. Like so. Okay, that is the V cut side, and that's the end one. Here we have a squid, I'm gonna show you how to prepare it. It looks quite daunting, but actually it's really easy. We have the tentacles here, we have the head going into the body, and quite simply, we just pull out the insides and we're left with the head and the body detached. Just going to leave that there. Okay, inside here we have the head, we have the beak. We don't want that, it's nice and sharp. Uh, it's not gonna hurt you. If you eat it, it will. So we're gonna cut that off the tentacles there so we don't have the beak on anymore. Just pop that there and we're going to put that into our waste container. To clean out the tube as it's called now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the backbone out. It's like a piece of plastic. Okay, so we're going to pull that out, pop that to one side and the top of it. And then we're going to pull out the wings, the side of the squid. And that's how it swims. So we're just going to pull those wings off. That's one and two. So the two wings there. And then we're going to run the tube, just cut a little bit off the bottom, through running cold water. We're going to rinse it out. And just any insides there, we're just gonna pull out. Now we're going to take all the skin off the squid. Yeah, the outer casing, that's it. And we're going to trim it up a little bit. Just have a wipe down. Okay, 
Now we're going to take off the end there, just to tidy it all up. There's a few bits and pieces inside there. Okay, that's fine. Now, squid is more commonly uh, cut into rings for calamari, or you can cut it down the middle and cut it into squares, score both sides, and then you can pan fry that really quickly. It's gonna cook quickly anyway. Um, so you can pan fry um, the raw squid, a little bit of lemon juice, and add other flavors, a little bit chili. It takes on flavors really, really well. I've been using this for calamari, so I'm gonna cut it into rings. And then what you can do is just run your fingers around the inside of the squid ring, just to pull out any other bits and pieces, or even rinse it underwater want to clean it all the way through. Here we have a portioned up squid all ready to be cooked for calamari. So I've just cleaned it, pulled the head off, taken all the insides out, the cellophane backbone, thrown that away, and <clears throat> then cleaned all the rings, rinsed them under cold water. And I've got the tentacles here. So I've taken the tentacles off leaving the beak on the head, the mouth, we didn't want to do that, so the tentacles go after the mouth, they grab the fish and put it into the mouth. We can eat the tentacles, I, I actually like these a lot more because the batter or the breadcrumbs get stuck in between there and becomes really, really crispy. So nice to do your calamari in rings, either in a tempura batter, in a beer batter, you can flour, egg wash and breadcrumb them, and then garnish them with the same of the tentacles just on top there, really nice. Quick and easy to cook, take about two minutes, and calamari is a deep fried one. <clears throat> as long as you drain it well, it's in there for a couple of minutes, so it's not gonna absorb all that oil. This is one you have to deep fry, unfortunately. There are other methods, like I said, you can take the tube of the squid and you can cut that into squares, score lightly both sides and pan fry it with a bit of olive oil, a bit of lemon juice, a bit of garlic, a bit of ginger, or add any flavors you want to really.